Now let us look at uh, how income distribution and gains from trade are going to be affected through the specific factors model. So we have to and uh, we know that there are two goods, cloth and food. Home countries exporting what? Exporting cloth. Right. Home countries exporting cloth. This is what we have seen in the earlier recordings. The relative price of cloth has increased. Right. The relative price of cloth has increased. Now just think about it. After trade, relative price of cloth has increased. And uh, we know that the income of the capital owners has increased. You remember it from here? This is what we have said, that there is an increase in the income of the capital owners. Uh, so what has trade done? Trade has benefited the factor, which is specific to the commodity which the country is exporting. No? So please write trade. Benefits the factor. Specific to. The export sector. So in our case, countries exporting cloth. In cloth, the specific factor is is capital. Right? So we have already shown earlier also that income of if the relative price of cloth is going to increase, income of capital owners will increase. We have shown this earlier. You have shown this, right? Then countries importing the other good, which is food. So in a way, what has happened is that the relative size of food has fallen. So trade is, is hurting the factor which is specific to the import sector. So in food, the specific factor is in food, the specific factor is land. No? So what is trade doing? And we have seen a, so, so do remember, we have seen that when the relative price of uh, food is decreasing, the income of the landowners is falling. No, we have seen that. Uh, so what has happened here? Trade. Hurts the factor. Specific to import sector. Specific to import sector. So in this case, we have already shown that income of, because the relative price of uh, food has fallen, income of landowners. You have to see the earlier results if you haven't seen them. So my suggestion is that please see them. Uh, and as far as the, the benefits to the mobile factor is concerned, that is ambiguous. So we can't say, right? So, and trade has an ambiguous effect. on the mobile factor. So labor is the mobile factor which can, which can move across cloth and uh, food sector. 
So trade has an ambiguous effect on that. Trade has an ambiguous effect on that, right? Okay. Now, just think about it. In a closed economy, production possibilities would be equal to consumption possibility. This we already know that whatever I can produce, only that much I can consume. So there is no other way. So if I'm producing, let's say, QF of food, I can only consume DF of food. I can only consume this much. So the demand for food, the consumption of food, and the production of food will be equal. Similarly, if I'm producing QC, I can only demand that much. There is no trade which is happening. There is no extra consumption I can have from trade, right? In, in a closed economy. So closed economy means there is no trade, okay? But international trade, when the trade is going to happen, trade can make this thing possible that there is a possibility that you can even consume more than what you were consuming earlier before the trade. You can consume more than what you can consume by just producing everything by yourself. So trade can actually make it possible that your consumption mix and production mix can be different. So you might produce little lesser, but due to trade, you can actually increase the amount of the consumption of even both commodities. That is even possible, right? Uh, so there is a possibility that with the trade, the mix of the goods which you are going to consume that can differ from what you are producing. But at the same time, what is also important is that the question which arises is, can you spend more than what you are going to earn? No, that's not possible, right? So a country cannot spend more than what it can earn, no. Right? So whatever country is going to consume should be equal to the value of the production, what it is producing. That is the value of consumption must be equal to the value of production, right? So value of consumption is what? So what, what is it that I'm consuming? I'm consuming DC of cloth. I'm consuming DF of food, right? I'm consuming DC at the per unit price of PC. I'm consuming DF at the per unit price of PF. Fair enough. So that's the value of consumption. Value of production is I am producing QC of cloth and QF of food. Per unit price of cloth is PC. Per unit price of food is PF. Fair enough. Okay. Now, can I also write it like this? Can I just take things common in a way? Uh, so can I write it like uh, DF minus QF? So I can write PF, DF minus, and this is plus something, minus PF, QF is equal to PC, QC minus PC, DC. I can write it like this. So I can write PF, DF minus QF equals to PC. QC minus DC. So DF minus QF is equal to PC upon PF. QC minus DC. No? You tell me one thing. What is DF minus QF? you are consuming more than what you are producing of food, right? If this is positive. So this would mean what? You have to import food. Imports of food, no? This would mean what? These are the imports of food. QC minus DC is you are producing more but you are consuming less of cloth. You're producing more of cloth and you produce and you're consuming less of cloth. So this, this would mean exports of food. 
exports of clock sorry no uh, so imports of food and this is uh, this is the relative price of clock This is the relative price of food. So, the imports of food would be equal to exports of food times the relative price of food. No? Okay. What about if I want to write it like this? So I have the consumption of food here. I have the production of food here. I have the consumption of cloth here and I have the production of cloth here, right? Okay. This guy is the production possibility frontier. This guy is the production possibility frontier. Fair enough. Okay. And uh, in case if there is no trade, which is happening, then I might be, I can probably sit here. I can only consume what I am producing, right? So I am producing along this PPF and let's say I'm consuming this much. So I'm consuming maybe what, whatever. Uh, this much of cloth and this much of food. Uh, but let's say with after trade, of course, this becomes my budget line. This becomes my budget line. And uh, I can also, you know what? I can even consume more than what I'm producing. I can even consume more than what I'm producing. So let's say this point is point 0.1 and this point is point 0.2. This point is point 0.1 and this point is point 0.2. So in theory, what is possible is that I can even consume here. So this is my budget line. So given this budget line, probably I can even consume here. No? Can even consume here. And if I consume a point such as this, you know, then what happens is that uh, I will be sort of what you can say, consuming more of both the goods, no? I'm even consuming more of both the goods. So what I'm doing is earlier, I can consume at point two, what was given according to my production possibility frontier. Now, I can produce at point one, I'm producing more of cloth and less of food, but I can actually consume at this point, no? I can do that. And in a way, what is possible is that I can consume more of both the goods. That is also possible. I can consume more of both the goods. And if I'm consuming more of both the goods, then if, if the total gains of for the economy is that it can actually consume more of both the goods, then it can, in principle, what is also uh, possible is that, that uh, this entire gain to the economy could be actually passed on to every individual in the economy also. Uh, so whatever is the, let's say, economy can have 100 units more of food and cloth after trade. And if there are 100 people, then every individual can actually share in this, uh, in this total gain. That is possible. That is possible. Uh, so this is what my budget constraint was. And, uh, and uh, in principle, I, went, I can even consume at point three, you know, that is there. So one thing is, uh, few things about the budget constraint is that the slope of the budget constraint is PC by PF, this you already know. Uh, that is the slope of the budget constraint. Is PC by PF. That is what the slope of the budget constraint will look like, right? Okay. 
and uh, this budget constraint is tangential to the production possibility frontier at the chosen point at what at wherever you want to consume or at wherever you want to produce let's say right so it is tangent so this is the tangency point tangency between budget constraint and PPA. And this give rise to your production choice. This give rise to the production choice. So wherever you want to consume, wherever you want to produce, let's say. Uh, so in principle, it is possible for the economy to consume more of both goods after trade, right? In principle, <clears throat> it is possible for the economy to consume more of both the goods after trade. So earlier it was consuming at point two. Now it is consuming. If you compare point three to point two, you have more of both the goods after trade. That's possible. Uh, and, uh, <clears throat> and if the economy is going to gain in terms of more of both the goods, and in principle, this is also possible that it can actually, uh, all of these gains can trickle down to the entire population that every individual also in principle can be, uh, can, can actually gain from this, right? So everyone can be made better off by consuming more. Uh, so this is about a very small recording on how the income distribution and the gains from trade can be seen in the specific factors model, right? Okay.